Hari Om, Chapter 17. We are very clear now that anything to do with Sattvic Gun in our actions and in our words, in our speech, in our very divinar, that Sattvikta shows. Sattvikta, it comes from what? Even if there is a touch of selflessness, that shows in our actions, in our daan, in our tap, in our yagya, in our duties. Selflessness. The moment there is a, even a touch of selfishness, what happens is we become uh, riddled with expectations and results for ourselves and swarth and therefore desire driven actions will show in our speech and our actions and most of all it will show in our interactions with other people. So the guna that we hold are going to be the key to our progress towards spirituality. So we were talking about um, the sattvic gun of tap. Tap means making an effort for the higher. How do we make the effort for the higher? We may attend uh, uh, kirtans and bhajans to begin with maybe. Um, if we are a, of a bhakt, bhakti kind of person and we may like to attend uh, classes or lectures if we are more towards a rational uh, intellectual understanding of jnana. Uh, so if, whether it is tap or swadhyay or jnana or dhyan meditation in all these actions, also the our sattvikta or our rajasikta or our tamas shows. Even in our effort or tap towards the higher, how does it show? So in the 13th verse of 17th chapter, Bhagwan had said, Vidhina, Vidhina masrishtanam, mantrahina madakshinam. The sacrifices that we do, the efforts that we put in are contrary to the ordinance or to the scriptures. That's a tamasic kind. When it is sattvic, it means that we are uh, doing all these actions by showing proper reverence to the scriptures, to the gurus and, um, and also keeping ourselves in complete cleanliness, shaucham. <laughs> shaucham meaning the sattvic person will not allow the real place of our residence, which is the mind. The real place of our residence is not our bungalows and flats and sparkling palaces or, uh, or mansions. It is the quality of the mind. Shaucham of that place where we actually reside is what Bhagwan says is a sattvic way to live. That means that place, that place in the mind is not riddled with anxieties and expectations and grudges and bitterness and complaining um, and of course vengefulness in the extreme cases. If that is clean, shaucham, arjavam, automatically there is a simplicity, saralta in our interaction with the other people because we are not in interacting in that case with people with expectations or for gaining something out of them all the time. Uh, so therefore, our javam, saralta, simplicity becomes part of a sattvic personality. In the 14th verse, Bhagwan said, Deva Dveja Guru Pragya Poojanam Shaucha Arjavam uh, They respect and revere the people who are wise and they keep their inner and outer world clean. Shaucham Brahmacharya Mahinsa Cha That is, of course, they practice brahmacharya, which is not overindulging in any of the senses, not allowing any of the senses to overindulge. So, self-restraint is a kind of brahmacharya. And ahimsa, we already said that even if we hold a thought of uh, taking something away from people or holding something from people when they deserve it, it's a kind of hinsa. It's a kind of hinsa when we envy people and do not share their happiness. It's a kind of envy when uh, we create a division between us and them, whoever, on whatever grounds, whatever the premise of the division, it doesn't matter. But us and them is already a seed of division. And that division is going to manifest, is going to become um, expressed in some kind of violent behavior in, uh, in the future. But the seed is carried with us. Ahinsa is Bhagwan expecting from us as a sattvic person. Shariram tapa uchyate. These are the 
satric disciplines of the body now as we move to verse number 15 he has talked about the the, the disciplines of speech in uh, verse number 15 bhagwan said the tapas of speech is such that it doesn't cause a disturbance or excitement or um, or hurt in the person who is listening to the words so when we speak make sure it is satyam priyahitam cha yata for their benefit said compassionately but the truth is spoken that is the discipline of speech and the discipline of speech very often is violated when we speak lies when we try to manipulate people when we try to hide things from people because we don't trust them um for for whatever reasons and therefore bhagwan now then moves on to disciplines satvik rajasik and tamasik disciplines of tap our highest efforts of tap which is there uh, said in uh, verse number 17 of chapter 17 श्रद्धया परया तप्त तपस्तत्रिविधि नरे विथ वॉट एवर वी प्रैक्टिस वॉट एवर तप वॉट एवर एफर्ट इफ इट इज डन विथ फुल श्रद्धा नैचुरली वेन वी डोंट हैव श्रद्धा इन समथिंग वी डोंट पुट इन आर एफर्ट इट अप्लाइज इवन टू द थिंग्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सो लीव अलोन द श्रद्धा ऑफ द हाइएस्ट काइंड श्रद्धा इन द परमात्मा श्रद्धा इन द हाइएस्ट ट्रूथ if i don't have trust that i will be able to um to paint well let's say and i just distrust myself i will never ever be able to put in that uh, that beauty and that grace and that perfection into the art because in the beginning itself i didn't have shraddha in it so bhagwan says whatever you do in the world if you do it uh, with complete shraddha and steadfastness you will in any case first of all you will be satvik insight that is selfless why why does he say selfless because that is what brings in the seed of all the corruption selfishness and therefore in the second line of the 17th verse bhagwan said aphala kaankshi bhir yuktahi ab phal ki aankshha ke sath har kaam agar hum karenge tab it will only be chasing after results chasing after this or that and not giving attention to the process of doing what we are doing and so if the attention is on the process of the actual action then the phal is taken care of by bhagwan so bhagwan says a phal akanksha phal ki akanksha na karo then you will be of a satvik mind whatever actions you undertake and in the 18th verse bhagwan said satkara mana pujartham but there are many people who do a lot of good actions lot of good actions sat but they do it for satkar maan puja ki hamara hamari maan badhai satkar naam ho jaye ki hum aisa karte hain hum phala phala puja aur social work aur yagya and i organize so many of these uh, um, yagyas uh, involving <coughs> uh, talks of uh, acharyas okay but if you do it with uh, the the thought that i am doing it the karta bhav mera hai then bhagwan says tapo dambhe chaiva dambhe na chaiva yata aap sirf itna acche actions kar rahe hain only for your own dambh hypocrisy and arrogance and that is neutralizing and cancelling out everything we do whatever we do if we are exhibiting it and if we are from that exhibition of all our good actions we are expecting a lot of approval and wah wah hi from people that expectation itself is cancelling out the good effort because that dambha the arrogance that we feel when we are uh, appreciated or admired uh, or respected satkar hamara satkar hota hai then my purpose of that action is satkar and maan and puja puja here means people who will revere me so so 18th verse says satkar mana pujartham tapo dambhe na chaivayata damb ke liye karte hain tab wo action rajasik ho gaya it may be the best of actions it may even have benefited a lot of people but has it benefited me so i have to see my spiritual growth so maybe uh, we did a huge yagya of feeding feeding 100 people and uh, propping up an orphanage or whatever 
now it has benefited them definitely and that punya will be there but if we did it with the motive of um, approval and satkar that dambha is going to uh, neutralize our spiritual growth kriyate ta deha proktam so how is it that the tamasic people act if my act becomes very rajasic because of my desire for approval it becomes a rajasic act it's not satvik anymore only when it is a phala kangshi uh, not uh, there is no akanksha or desire or anxiety for result then it is satvik action with the desire for um, results of man satkar rajasic action but what about tamasic people you know some people will still do a lot of uh, puja yagya tirtha even tirtha yes why not and tap and dhyan but bhagwan says in the 19th verse of 17th chapter मूढ़ ग्राहेणात्मनो यत पीडया क्रियते तपः द फूलिश पीपल हैव सम रॉन्ग नोशन द रॉन्ग नोशन दैट दे हैव इज अज्ञान एंड द अज्ञान इज दैट आई एम इन्वॉल्व इन दिस वर्ल्ड बट आई एम दिस बॉडी दिस माइंड एंड दिस बॉडी एंड माइंड नीड्स द मैक्सिमम कम्फर्ट and the maximum pleasure that is the belief of the that is the shraddha or the belief of the tamasic people so with this wrong belief um they do a lot of tap but there are also some people who do a lot of tap tap here means uh, doing some very very hard penance or austerity right so how do tamasic people do penance or austerity yes they do we have seen people do black magic <laughs> when when do they do black magic when they want to hurt somebody else that means my effort my tap is meant not for me but to hurt actually hurt or bring down somebody else you say oh but these days we don't do black magic or at least we are not involved in black magic so we are probably not in the tamasic uh, kind of tap well we may not be in that kind of tap but do you know that in the modern world we can still see tamasic tap that is when there is competitive rivalry within organizations and institutions what do people do they make a lot of effort uh, maybe they they create wrong reports uh, they make false um, reports and um, maybe they stay up midnight up to midnight in the offices uh, doing something so that their work shows up much more whatever they are doing tap tap extreme penance and austerity why because the competitive rivalry is driving them and they want to hurt someone they want to make sure that someone else whoever does not get that promotion i want to hurt someone so i'll sit up and create false reports now i have done put in a lot of effort that's tough yes in the modern world also be sure we do see a very tamasic tough that means very um a very strong effort put into something but with the purpose of bringing down someone or hurting someone what about imperialistic colonialism when you had this colonization um, race going on so so there was um, there was portugal and spain and france and britain and each one wanted to outdo the other and they sent out ship after ship and they had great losses and so many sailors were killed in the effort because uh shipping was not of that standard in those days there were no proper maps uh, and they wanted all to all of them to discover new lands and new wealth and new spices what was this competition i want to do better than portugal i want to have more colonies than france i want to, this of course the the days of uh, imperialism is are over <laughs> but now it is called neo colonialism colonialism neo imperialism do you know what that is that is the multinational companies they are bent to outdo one is out, bent to outdo the other to have more and more stake just like the the colonial imperialists they had physical uh, possession of new lands material uh, and um, what do you call them uh, the multinationals the commercial world they have a race for holding more and more stake in various countries more and more stake in the biggest companies of the various companies and there is a big race 
so do you think it's all done honestly no and they work really hard for it so that is the it is here tap i am using in the worldly sense tap technically cannot be used for a worldly sense it al- always means tap for a higher purpose for a higher gain for spiritual gain okay but i am just for the sake of example saying that here there is a lot of hard work put in for competitive rivalry and we are doing it all the time what is all this this is nothing but tamasik because i want to bring down another company i want to buy out another company i want to make sure that because if i am making microchips i want to make sure that a, a certain country which is struggling to put up its microchip company is destroyed its business is destroyed so i will do all kinds of uh, corporate uh, uh, espionage and i will destroy it i don't want to name the countries but <laughs> there are countries who are uh, following uh, in order to gain more and more power over smaller countries are promising great loans and uh, lending great uh, loans and finally they are leading these countries to ruin financial ruin and rack what is all this if this is and they're putting in lot of money and lot of effort this is all tamasik tap tap means great effort and it's tamasik because countries and companies are destroyed because of my tap this is ex- an extreme asceticism of people when they practice any you have seen all these uh, some of these ascetics they practice some extreme asceticism just to outdo outdo somebody else well all this is tamasik do not think that effort always is admirable and uh, so in the end we'll see what what is it that is actually destroying our satvikta we we have a natural satvikta but we sort of just follow the tide and we get into all kinds of rajasik and tamasik activities just because it's happening all over the world haven't we taken uh, corporate rivalry and multinational expansion for granted yes it's part of business no it's not just like in the days of uh, imperialism colonial imperialism it was a it was a standard operating procedure let's call it it was accepted therefore no one raised uh, an eyebrow he said oh this country is now captured so many lands in africa or asia no one thought that it was wrong today historically we can look back and say it was wrong in the same way today we know a lot about corporate expansion and uh, Uh, this hegemony over countries political geopolitical hegemony and we take it for granted yes this is part of economics this is part of geography no a person who knows that something is wrong it's tamasik will not do it i don't know if you saw a post recently it was about the islamic conference in saudi arabia and uh, one of our neighboring countries had raised a, uh, an objection about our building our um, ayodhya temple within the country and the islamic conference one of the main speakers actually stood up and said you have no right to talk about the internal affairs of india first secondly india has never discriminated against what is the religion caste creed politics uh, political uh, leaning of the neighboring countries when they reach out when they have reached out with medication and help in every exigency to their very own neighbors who uh, who do not profess the same uh, political stand who do not profess the same religion why because there is no discrimination this is a recent event so when a satvik behavior has to be uh, exhibited this is how we can exhibit satvik behavior in the global field in the larger geopolitical field it's not that we can take it for granted yes um this is how the world operates no in fact in the islamic conference they gave an example and they said that uh, india has always stood by everyone in terms of uh, help and support and maldives a small uh, archipelago of islands in our neighboring uh, in the south west of our uh, country maldivian islands in the, um, the maldivian delegate said that india is so close to us it can easily dominate us our politics our um, policies but it does not expect any of this from us and it always stands by us when we have a tsunami when we have uh, problems with covid india has always stood by us 
without expectation this is the maldivian delegate so if our neighbors respect us today it's because of satvikta non expectation and not of a, a wild uh, expansionism yes i have the power so i will exercise power and dominate over others why that is rajasik this desire for domination and for wealth and for power is rajasik and how will it show a nation is an inanimate thing it shows in leadership so when people are satvik their leadership is satvik only then will politics or uh, global politics be satvik everything changes from the individual upwards so this was a recent example of uh, satvik behavior in every field every field of uh, that that we are engaged in what about gifting now bhagwan is giving very simple example what about giving gifts so you know that india had given some of some of them were loans and the others were gifts of uh, medication during the uh, the global crisis okay so how do these gifts go out bhagwan says they go out in a satvik way and a rajasik way and a tamasik way don't and india is not the only one helping out okay there are many many countries who are uh, who have been uh, reaching out to smaller countries in terms of building their uh, harbors <laughs> and uh, building their uh, bridges and development projects but but we have to see whether that help has been rajasik tamasik or um satvik how do we know when we look into ourselves and we find out even a gesture of a gift can be satvik in verse number 20 krishna explains दातव्यमिति यद्यानम् दीयते नोपकारिने अ गिफ्ट व्हिच हैज टू बी गिवन एंड इट ऑट टू बी गिवन टू समवन फ्रॉम होम वी आर नॉट एक्सपेक्टिंग एनी सर्विस और हेल्प राइट नाउ और इन द फ्यूचर एंड इट इज नॉट डन फॉर सर्विस और हेल्प व्हिच वी हैव रिसीव्ड फ्रॉम देम इन द पास्ट दैट मींस पास्ट प्रेजेंट फ्यूचर दिस पर्सन or thing or i mean not thing this person or group of people or nation is not expected to return that gift or favor only then it's called a gift otherwise you can call it seva you can call it sahayata you can call it support but don't call it daan daan is when you are really not expecting anything in return just like the maldivian delegate said that india has never expected things back from us but it has stood by us this does not apply to everyone here whenever we gift how do we gift we gift uh, things to our own politicians our local people our own pandit the one who is going to uh, our purohit or pandit who is going to do the regular yagyas and seva for us or um or of course we sometimes gift um to our own helpers and those who do service for us our helpers and house help that's not a gift at all bhagwan says when that service or help is not expected uh, either now or in the future that is a real gift deshe kale cha patre cha a real gift is that which is given at the right time to the right person and in the right place deshe kale cha patre cha now when you are giving it selflessly then it has to be given at a time when it is most needed that's why kalecha it's given at a place where it will make the most difference to some people or to some communities that is desh desh here means location place and patrecha you have to give it to a person uh, who is most in need at that time so most people are not in need of everything all the time but at a at some point somebody needs something and at that exact moment when you reach out without expectation of course then it is daan deshe kale cha patre cha you have to see the right place right time right person and that will be daan tad daanam satvikam smritam that is called satvik daan daan here gifting or, or charity now that means that any daan that we do has to be done as a loving duty handing out uh, medications handing out uh, life support systems it has to be done as as a loving duty and with reverence with reverence 
so when our da- when our charity or our daan reaches someone the other thing one of the rishis had said one of the acharyas that when this daan reaches out to someone make sure you don't consider it your own main de raha hu ye mera hai no it was meant to reach that person at that time and therefore ye usi ka haq hai give it as if ye usi ka hai can be give it with that attitude because otherwise it wouldn't reach there it wouldn't have reached to that person that means usi ka maan kar usi ko de dena chahiye that is called gifting with reverence charity with reverence with respect otherwise hum kehte rahenge humne diya ye hamara hai hamara if we say hamara then it will not uh, transfer to any other person that means that we are pledging to give away that which actually we consider not ours at least for that moment and then uh, it is a real haq or claim of the person we are giving it to that means what in this way if we give away things that means we are not detached to the things we are giving away then we are not we are also detached to the things and detached to the action of giving main de raha hu very important this detachment thing detachment is the key word in geeta that's what we keep repeating isn't it detachment to small things like even gifts is the key to making our lifestyle changes so detachment to the things we give away or the services of course it may even be a um, a service and detachment to the action itself ki acha main nahi kar raha hu and detachment to the most important to the phal what will i get in return what is its phal that also we have to be detached to when we do it with this kind of um, a feeling a uh, detachment to the thing action and phal or result it is a truly satvik charity that's what by one says but is there a rajasik charity also yes and now you can guess what it might be it's very easy number 21 यत्तु प्रत्युपकारार्थम फलमुद्देश्य वा पुनः आई डू समथिंग जस्ट द ऑपोजिट ऑफ सात्विक विद द व्यू ऑफ रिसीविंग समथिंग इन रिटर्न ओके हमने इनके लिए ये किया है अब मुझे आ, मेरे ख्याल से दिस इज व्हाट दे आर गोइंग टू डू फॉर मी इन द फ्यूचर और गिव मी इन फ्यूचर सो इट मे नॉट बी मटेरियल गिफ्ट्स बट ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ एक्शंस एंड सर्विसेज दैट वी गिव एंड आल्सो जेस्चर्स you know having invited people over for something uh, stood by them when they were hospitalized all kinds of gestures we do but then we are expecting ki bhai hamara jab bhi samay aayega they these people should be there with me why phala muddeshya va punaha looking for result again and again punaha ki ye hame mil jaye that means the charity has been done you have supported someone very good someone else has benefited from it very good but we have not benefited because our nature has become rajasik we have not benefited spiritually therefore hamara nuksan hua hai we have become rajasik when we have this feeling diyate cha parikleshtam or when we give in another form what is this form very reluctantly ग्रजिंगली कि अरे देना पड़ रहा है इतना तो करना ही पड़ेगा चलो कर देते हैं मिनिमम कितना हो कितने में हम कर सकते हैं वेरी ग्रजिंग एंड रिलक्टेंट वे ऑफ गिविंग इज नॉट अ रिस्पेक्टफुल वे टू गिव बट येस समटाइम्स यू डू इट परिक्लिस्टम वेरी रिलक्टेंट दिस भाव ऑफ ऑफ रिलक्टेंस एंड एक्सपेक्टेशन इज वॉट मेक्स अस नॉन सात्विक दैट्स ऑल so outwardly all the dana is being given but are there ways of gifting even in a tamasic way yes of course and uh, i need not give you examples from geopolitics right now there is there are smaller nations nation after nation who uh, are destroying themselves financially they're going uh, completely in the red why because the help that was given to them was with a uh, with a malice with a kind of uh, manipulation with a hope that when they are destroyed they will uh, come under my sway now that's totally tamasic when you destroy someone with your um actions so number 
adesh kale adhyanam that means giving disrespectfully <laughs> and with the intention to hurt or to destroy or to insult without naming the nations i'm sure the example is very clear and do we do it in our individual lives too maybe maybe so when we give a big loan and we expecting that 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 person now will be under my sway and that person had jolly well follow my instructions and i'm going to uh, make sure that uh, that whatever my will is supreme in that relationship it happens many a time not only with money or material things also when people have uh, done a great favor like you have uh, gained a promotion or an appointment in a big company um or uh, support during some family function or big marriage and a person has stood by and and whatever whatever if the service has been given there is always a shift in the relationship between the giver and the receiver that shift in the relationship is because the giver is rajasik or tamasik otherwise there should be no shift people will say okay you needed it at that time i happen to have the resources at that time and i happen to be there at the right time you received it it's yours totally satvik way of standing by someone but when we receive uh, appointments or promotions you will always see that the person who has helped us through is now expecting us to follow their um, lead and uh, and then it becomes a, a relationship of dominance it has happened over and over again it happens perhaps in families also uh, in corporates of course is the experience that i am talking about but the relationship changes and that is because the giver is not satvik patre bhyas cha diyate so that person the gift has to be given at the right time to the right person without expectation of course without selfishness and also bhagwan says do not give it to apatrebhya apatrebhya means one who does not deserve it are there is one more category added here now apatrebhya who is a person not deserving it yes there are many people who may not deserve something and you need not go out and be over generous with them with your gyan or dan or dhan or seva whatever it is why because sometimes they are um, um, how can you say that they are undeserving because they may turn around and take great advantage of you they may they may do it with a, a malice that i am going to now um, take advantage of this person or the person may be receiving with a lot of greed the person doesn't actually need it and he pretends that he needs it and then the greed shows up and you help out someone um, there are many many apatra people non deserving that's a very difficult concept to describe um so who is in need and who is not how can we decide so we have to we have to tread that path very very gingerly also when we give away bhagwan is warning us giving away anything our service our seva our uh, emotions we when we give away our emotions means we st- stand by someone who needs our emotional support that is also a kind of dan or uh, and of course in the gross form uh, it could be uh, wealth and money etc when do we give things away where we give away when we have a sense of abundance a sense of abundance not a sense of lack so the moment we give away if we say are maine ye de diya usko ab now i'm feeling the poorer or the lack of it you can't feel the poorer for something we have given away <laughs> that would be contrary to the very the, the very principle of uh, daan daan is i come from abundance and i cannot feel poor or deprived the moment i have parted with something that belong to me that's the wrong way to give so we have to watch out what's going on inside the head now what is the important thing here the important thing here is whenever we give away uh, one of the acharyas have even said in his commentary that okay doesn't matter even if the people are apatra that means they're not deserving they'll take advantage of your wealth and they'll keep saying yes i'm very poor and they're investing it in some uh, black markets yeah they are apatra non deserving but the important thing he said is don't worry don't worry whether they are patra apatra time is right or not although krishna is saying look for the right 
deserving person and time. Why? Because the very act of giving, this Acharya said, is going to create in you the Swabhava of giving. You know the habit of giving. The action itself will transform us. So don't worry about who is receiving, kapatra hai ki kupatra hai. And uh, therefore it is said that we have to reach out to anyone, even if there is a terrorist who is badly injured. And uh, he, the law will take care of him. But right now if he needs water, we can still offer water to him. If he is there, lying there and he is injured and badly hurt, we can offer. He is not kupatra. And of course, karma will take care of his deeds. So, even when people know what is the wrong way to give, what is the wrong way to give? Why is it that they uh, they keep being greedy about hoarding and accumulating things? So, Bhagwan had already said in the third chapter, he said, Kama esha krodha esha rajoguna. Your Rajoguna and Tamoguna both come from your greed and your uh, desire. That is, I am translating calm as greed. <clears throat> Actually, it means desire and your anger. <clears throat> Why don't I have it? I must have this. That desire itself creates the wrong way of holding on to things. The very swabhava of giving away. We need very little for our daily sustenance. We know that. <laughs> But beyond that is all hoarding and the act of giving becomes our swabhava and that's what uh, Bhagwan is looking for in Arjun saying Tum satvik bano, pehle satvik bano and that will create a kind, of, a kind of freedom in you. Why do we need freedom? We need freedom from our own karma and krodha, our desire and our anger and greed. What do you mean freedom? How is it holding me? I feel free. I'm not held on by anything. No, you feel free. But remember that the greed is not allowing us to become magnanimous. Anger, crows is not allowing me to have self-control. So how am I free? I cannot be free unless um, if I have the anxiety of the future, if I don't have a certain number of crores of rupees, what will happen uh, to my medical expenses in the future? Yes, that is bhaya, that is fear. So, my bhaya is not allowing me to become uh, even-minded. There's always anxiety. And because I am envious, because I have this desire for things and keeping them with me and I am envious of other people. My envy is not allowing me to feel santosh. Santosh, that is a sense of completeness and fulfillment. And then we say we are free. See the number of things I did not allow myself. I did not, my kama, krodh, mad, lova, moha did not allow me self-restraint and santosh and happiness and bliss and fearlessness and magnanimity and generosity all this was not allowed to me by me so that freedom is not there with me once i have this freedom i am free to follow the higher path that's the whole point of talking about become satvik become satvik arjun otherwise you can't reach the highest goal okay so now bhagwan goes on to say once you are in that satvik mode verse number 23 all your gifts and your tapa and your yagya and your austerities, all these things and your speech, of course, when they become very sattvic. Number 23. Om Tatsaditi Nirdesho Om Tatsaditi Nirdesho Brahmana Strividha Smritaha Number 23. Brahmana Stena Vedasya Yagyasya Vihita Puraha that means you are beyond the tamasic and now everything that you touch with the sattvic mode will become beautiful. Naturally, by sattvic we mean that the selflessness is there in it. That there is a non-expectation. That there is a uh, no anxiety of the phal. And therefore the act or the yagya or the tapa or the speech or the, or the dan, the gifting, everything, everything, our very demeanor becomes sattvic and that beauty is held in uh, all these actions. So, Bhagwan says, even so, knowingly or unknowingly, 
you know that we may have performed so many actions we may have said so many things in our haste and taken so many decisions in our haste or our anxiety which may be wrong what do we mean by wrong here by wrong we mean again coming from desire or selfishness or expectation or swarth ki mera ho jaye this creeps in all these things do creep into our actions and thought and speech if we are not watching if it has crept in this selfishness and this desire uh, has crept into your actions arjun knowingly or unconsciously or unknowingly then don't worry krishna has a solution for it krishna is saying simple there is a one shot solution to everything the one shot solution is first of course as a sadhak as a seeker you are able to detect that a false emotion or a non satvik emotion has crept into your action that itself is a great sadhana it's a great um, attitude of a seeker to be able to detect and then say bhagwan says brahma nasri vidha smritah it has om tat saditi is something that you can surrender your actions to which means what one shot solution is disown the action main karta hu maine kiya hai whether you do good whether you are successful or non successful whether you do it selfishly or selflessly if you can surrender it to om tat sat now om here stands for invoking the lord you say oh i have done something which i uh, with expectation and with a sense of irreverence and uh, with a sense of why is that person not returning my favors and i feel that that's not satvik bhagwan says just invoke the lord invoke the lord and say om that is invoking the lord and say tat that means all ill actions belong to that tat is that that higher power and i remember that higher power sat sat is that highest reality so om tat sat invoking the lord om tat surrender the actions to tat that reality remembering the highest reality sat om tat sat of course by just mechanically saying om tat sat i may not be free from my <laughs> selfishness um but bhagwan says even if you practice it once it will become a habit when you will remember by saying om tat sat that the higher reality is not in this sansar and i am actually held by uh, all these prakriti the the prakriti of my emotions and my uh, physical realities prakritik realities sat i will remember the sat and i will go beyond it offer it to the lord whatever the actions om tat sat he will straighten out the creases whatever went wrong with it now i may offer it to any higher power he is saying brahmanastena the scriptures and the veda have come from this sound but i am offering it to the highest om that om could be jesus or allah or buddha or any higher power that you believe in that shraddha that higher power is invoked in us the moment we reach out to that higher power which is another way of saying ishwar arpan buddhi and therefore om tat sat Uh, is a way of starting any activity and ending any activity any yagya we do ends with om tat sat any tap or um, dhyan or uh, studies we see, either we say krishna arpanam astu that means i offer it back to you or om tat sat i remember the lord and it's yours back to you after every yagya or uh, learning or puja om tat sat is pronounced in uh, in all our traditions if you will notice therefore then bhagwan says when can i use the word om in number 24 bhagwan says tasma do mityuda hritya yagya dana tapas kriya therefore thus uttering the word om and om tat sat you can do it in yagya dana tap kriya any kriya any action yagya ho dana ho tapah first line pravartante vidhanoktaha when you begin the action and uh, end it with om tat sat this is the way the scriptures have enjoined in us to begin and end our actions by doing this what are we doing actually 
वी डू इट मैकेनिकली बिकॉज पंडित जी ने बोला ओम तत्सत बोलो हमने ओम तत्सत बोल दिया नो इट बिकम्स टू मैकेनिकल वी आर नॉट वी आर नॉट रोबोज वी आर नॉट पपिट्स एंड डेफिनेटली वी आर नॉट पिलर्स पिलर्स टू होम वी आर रीडिंग द स्क्रिप्चर्स वी आर रैशनल पीपल वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वाई द मोमेंट वी हैव सेड ओम तत्सत इन आर माइंड वी हैव ड्रॉप्ड द एक्शन द फल and therefore that detachment and denouncement comes in the very utterance of that word pravartante we begin an action and we utter with this with this utterance udahritya udahritya means utterance that renouncement this renunciation of our action and our phal and our anxiety over it is to be renounced om tat sat is not mechanical uh, the way most of us do it during pujas सततम ब्रह्मवादिना बाय द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ ब्रह्म विद्या दिस इज वॉट इज बिलीव नाउ वेन वी फ्री आर सेल्स और डिनाउंस आर कर्ताशिप और आर डूअरशिप और आर कर्ता भाव इज गॉन इन एनी एक्शन वेदर इट इज वर्ल्डली संसारी और इट इज फॉर अ हायर दान और तप और यज्ञ और ध्यान दैट मीन्स दैट नाउ इट बिलोंग्स टू कृष्णा इट्स नॉट माइंड and therefore i have unburdened myself the very unburdening of myself om tat sat finished i have done my 100 whatever my 100% may not be the best but it's my 100% i give it my best shot and i close the chapter offer it to lord i am free i am free i don't have to go back and uh, be anxious about it and worry about it and mull over it so then we are free free to do what we are free not to do something higher which of course is required that freedom but we are free from our own damb darp arrogance pride maine ye kiya hai the moment we are tied to our darp and damb i don't have the freedom to be saral i don't have the freedom to be arjavam saral simple uh, non manipulative i need that freedom so that dambha darpa and kaam i have to free myself and therefore every action every action social work um, or work at home om tat sat i have done my best i close the chapter here that gives you the kind of space in your mind the kind of freedom to climb now you are free to climb climb higher when you are free from your own darpa and arrogance and pride and uh, and that sluggishness of uh, hatred all that is gone now we are free so this mental attitude or the mental texture you see in every action is now being transformed the moment our mental texture is being transformed we know that krishna is doing it for the very kalyan of arjun arjun tum duniya mein kya karte ho kitni safalta paate ho mujhe usse koi matlab nahi hai tumhara kalyan as a human being you deserve the highest and that is par- that is the brahma vidya and we stand in place of arjun saying yes success and failures of this world and and losses and profits of this world uh, and uh, youth and old age everything is coming and going and it's just a very moving very unstable world what is it that i have to hold on to and krishna says you are here in this world to transform to the satvik to the highest texture of your mind because then i the highest reality is waiting to embrace you because then you will have nothing except the highest reality to embrace because then we would have shed all this baggage of maine ye kiya maine wo kiya daan kiya yagya kiya tap kiya and uske upar fir mujhe uska arrogance and damb darp how much baggage are we carrying bhagwan says unburden it with a simple om tat sat sat is the highest reality i'll take care of it you just shed it unburden it now verse number 25 om we have seen is the highest uh, the, the lord the lord whom we are invoking in us after and before every action what is tat tat verse number 25 दस विदाउट एमिंग फॉर द फ्रूट और फल ऑफ एनी ऑफ योर एक्शन अभिसंधाय फलम 
അഭിസന്ധായ ഫലം വിതൗട്ട് എയിമിംഗ് ഫോർ ഫ്രൂട്ട് ദാന ക്രിയാശ വിവിധ ഓൾ ദ വേരിയസ് ആക്ഷൻ വിവിധ ഓൾ ദ വേരിയസ് ആക്ഷൻസ് ഓഫ് ദാന ക്രിയാശ ക്രിയന്തെ മോക്ഷ കാംക്ഷിഭി ക്രിയന്തെ ആ പെർഫോം ബൈ ഹൂം ആ പെർഫോംഡ് ബൈ മോക്ഷ കാംക്ഷിഭി ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് വേർഡ് സെക്കൻഡ് ലൈൻ ഓൺലി ദോസ് ഹു വോണ്ട് ടോട്ടൽ ഫ്രീഡം ലിബറേഷൻ മോക്ഷ മോക്ഷ കി ആകാംക്ഷ ജോ രക്തേ ഹൈ ഉൻകോ കഹത്തേ ഹൈ മോക്ഷ കാംക്ഷി ഭി ഇഫ് ഐ വോണ്ട് ടോട്ടൽ ലിബറേഷൻ ആൻഡ് നോട്ട് റിലീഫ് ടെമ്പറി റിലീഫ് ഫ്രോം മൈ സ്മോൾ ലിറ്റിൽ പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ഇൻ ദ വേൾഡ് ഫിനാൻഷ്യൽ പ്രോബ്ലംസ് റിലേഷൻഷിപ്പ് പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ഇമോഷണൽ പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ഫിസിക്കൽ ആൻഡ് ഹെൽത്ത് പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ഇഫ് ഐ ഡോൺ വോണ്ട് ലിബറേഷൻ സ്മോൾ സ്മോൾ ലിബറേഷൻ ഫ്രോം ദ വേൾഡ് ഐ വോണ്ട് ടോട്ടൽ മോക്ഷ ഫ്രോം ദ വെരി സൈക്കിൾ ഓഫ് ജന്മ ബന്ധൻ and rebirth then i have to have that satvik mind which becomes completely um, empty and free and saral and that is the mind that will gain moksha so if i have that moksha desire moksha ki akanksha only then i will do all my actions without aiming for the phal so hey arjun tadityanabhe sandhaya if you are doing all your actions without aiming only for the phal then you deserve what the moksha kaanshi bihi deserve those who are uh, aiming for the highest moksha or the only moksha you are deserving of that so freedom but i am not physically bound <laughs> yes i know i am not physically even emotionally i may say i am not bound but see the number of things that go on in the mind in our free time and everything that goes on in the head everything if we watch it like a drashta like a sakshi like an um, like a viewer like a witness we will notice that they are the mind is involving our emotions in people and objects and situations and all the current affairs that are going on around us that means our emotions are not free they are already held and therefore, therefore the mind is dwelling in that so so our attachment and our anxieties and our expectations which all come from our desire aisa hona chahiye that desire for anything any object or person or situation to change is my desire and from that comes all the burden that we carry we carry a huge burden of anxieties and expectations and the mind is not free i want that freedom that freedom of mind and arjun you need that freedom of mind and emotions although you don't look as if you are physically physically bound and you are we take pride that oh nothing is binding me but be careful very very subtle things are binding us and therefore moksha kaanshi bihi the one who is completely aiming a kaanksha keeping a hope for moksha is the only one who can and burden or become totally empty of all this sansaric doing all the sansaric activities but closing the chapter each time with every action with om tat sat om tat sat i offer it to the lord let him take care of it i have done my best let my mind be now free and have the expanse and freedom to fly high to climb higher now like a swimmer a swimmer is in the water is completely submerged in water isse hum to sansar mein reh rahe hain hamare paas to itne family hai and issues hai and, and uh, there are of course financial issues and health issues itne sare issues mein hum to submerged hain yes even the swimmer is submerged in water but he does not let the water get in him if he did that he would drown if we let the sansar get into us that that is the end of our spiritual growth and that's the uh, reason why we are not able to rise higher to rise above the water because we are letting the sansar get into us but a swimmer knows better ki yes i have to be in water i will be submerged completely in water head and toes but i won't let the water get into me because i have to survive so if i have to survive spiritually i will be in sansar but i cannot allow the sansar to uh, to to sort of subsume all my emotions and thoughts and mind and actions and the texture of my mind i need to keep that beautiful and clean om tat sat offer my actions and be free then bhagwan says in verse number 26 
sad bhave sadu bhave cha that this sat he is explaining now the word sat the last word sat he says that sat stands for so many things it stands for a sense uh, of the ultimate reality the ultimate reality is sat yes it also means sadu bhava sadu bhave cha means goodness so truth goodness are the two things which are universal universal it cannot change with the change of uh, uh, countries and nations and uh, of historic times and of religious denominations and of religious uh, or political allegiance it cannot change these are two things which cannot change that's why they are called absolute absolute that sat is not different for anyone and that sadhu bhav goodness if you ask goodness kya hai it remains the same down the ages you don't need a ram to tell you that this is goodness you don't take revenge on people who are nasty to you and send you off to the forest for their own personal gains you still respect them and you bow down to them and you still do their agya kari work you don't need a ram even now after thousands of years after ram we know that it stands for that kind of action that kind of non vengefulness and reverence and respect and um, नॉन एजिटेटेड बिहेवियर कि ये मेरा सुख है मुझे पैलेस में रहना है ये आई एम गोइंग अवे फॉर फोर्टीन ईयर्स ये मेरा दुख है नॉट लेबलिंग थिंग्स है सुख है दुख है दैट सम भाव इज गुडनेस इवन टूडे राम ऑफकोर्स इज बिकम एन इंस्पिरेशन एंड वी नीड इंस्पिरेशन वी नीड हीरोज बट दैट डेफिनेशन डज नॉट चेंज सम भाव द वन हु इज सम भाव द वन हु कैरीज इन्फिनिट अमाउंट ऑफ पेशेंस एंड फॉर बेरेंस एंड क्वाइटनेस in the company of such people we are in awe even today and will be forever because these are absolute qualities we stand in awe of such people so we don't need a ram <laughs> all the time sadityata prajut prayujyate so uh, prayujyate means the word sad has been used as bhagwan says as reality and goodness that means uh whether you see uh the highest reality as sagun sagun means as in ram or krishna or buddha or allah or jesus you have these are forms and names naam and form is sagun but reality is the same you may see the same sat sat that is highest reality in nirgun without name and form you may see the same uh, sat in krishna and allah and jesus it's the same it's the same they are all avatars and all their leela is leela leela uh, means all the actions that they did as their avatars they are also sat so goodness and sat does not change Pra- prashaste karmani tatha they are both auspicious in any time any desh any kal and any does not change by geography and time and um desh or kul or desh and kul and dharm no, doesn't change doesn't sat chadda partha yujyate these acts the utterance of sat uh, of om tat sat therefore is auspicious hey arjun therefore for these reasons the utterance of om tat and sat is auspicious because when we are saying om we are invoking the highest the lord that invocation in us brings the lord into our lives and we then are able to relinquish our little arrogance of our small little achievements and actions and um talents or, or whatever and tat is that highest reality that highest reality is sat it stands for goodness and the highest truth therefore om tat sat is the most auspicious thing to say now you if you look at the sanskrit language the very language itself has so much of sat in it the word sat is highest reality but there are words which uh, which denote goodness in our lives right so sadachar good behavior sat karm uh, actions and tasks which are uh, beautiful actions which are satvik actions are sat karm sat seva our services which are satvik sat seva sad vyavhar 
all our interaction with people sad vyavahar see the the very language uh, sanskrit holds the word sat the highest reality to denote goodness within itself in our normal normal parlance sadachar kitna sadachari hai satkarmi hai that's why sanskrit language has been called a divine language because in its very grammar it is is interwoven the highest truth in its very structure is interwoven the the invocation of the highest reality therefore they call it the divine language because when people um, use the language it seems to them that they are closer to the highest truth <laughs> yeah it is a divine language in that sense so sat is truth and goodness so om tat sat use the words and uh, use these this invocation to start and complete your work and last two verses so i'll take a bit of time just to wind up the last two verses bhagwan says number 27 yagye tapasidane cha sthiti sadit saditi chochyate in yagya and in your dan just remain steadfast and sat just hold on to sat that is goodness and sat and therefore in all your actions karma chaiva tadarthiyam saditeva bhidiyate and all these actions if you are holding on to truth and goodness they will always remain satvik have no doubt about it they will remain satvik now verse number 28 i or auspicious another word for satvik is in this in this sense is auspicious number 28 the last verse अश्रद्धयाहुतम दत्तम तपस्तप्तम कृतम च यत बट इफ ऑल द इफ एनी ऑफ दीज एक्शंस आर डन विदाउट श्रद्धा विदाउट श्रद्धा विदाउट फेथ दैट यस दैट हाईएस्ट रियलिटी एंड गुडनेस इज द मोस्ट ऑस्पिशियस वे टू ब्रिंग दैट गुडनेस टू इनवोक दैट गुडनेस इनटू माय लाइफ सो दैट द टेक्सचर ऑफ माय माइंड बिकम सात्विक एंड प्योर सो दैट आई कैन बी फ्री फ्रॉम द बर्डन ऑफ Uh, the sansar which i am holding in my mind by the way sansar is not holding me i am holding on to it and with that freedom i can rise to the highest moksha if that is your shraddha then only you can do it but if you don't have shraddha and mechanically if we do it or with half heartedness or with a kind of uh, disdain or with a kind of skepticism ki ha aisa bhi hota hai kya that ashraddhaya the very first word bhagwan says is ashraddhaya things ashraddhaya hotam dattam if you do it any of your actions then asadityuchyate partha then the results will also be asat asat that means it will be unstable and it will be not permanent it will not be anywhere close to the the truth the sat the result the way we act is the result we get there is no a rocket science about this so you do it with ashraddhaya you will get scattered results उटरी If you have had no shraddha in that highest reality, if you don't know what is that highest reality, what is the use of all this effort? Because then it is like acting like a moor. What is the use of having done all the religious uh, functions and uh, and activities and religious rituals when we don't even know the highest reality? What is the highest reality? What is that param tattva, that consciousness? If you don't know it, then he says it just comes to zero. and sometimes we just do actions because we religious and uh, social activities because we want to be counted as the pious people that we are also pious om tat sat so we can close this chapter but with a kind of uh, conclusion first i'll close it om tat sat iti shri mad bhagavad gita su upanishad su brahma vidyayam yoga shastre shri krishna arjuna samvade श्रद्धयात्रय विभाग योगो नाम सप्तशोध्याय ओं तत्सत 
17th chapter closes here we have talked about in this chapter very quickly satvik which is meant to make you buoyant buoyant means light <clears throat> like a ball which is submerged in water and still it rises up to the surface of the water is my mind like that if it is satvik it will it may be submerged in water and it there may be so many uh, commitments and uh, responsibilities impinging upon me and still i will find it possible to rise above because satvikta or shraddha in the highest makes my mind buoyant the other thing is it's illuminating because the moment we hear some highest truth that one thing which is permanent everything else is changing the very rational truth when we hear because we are looking at it in a rational way otherwise a bhakta doesn't need so much of rationalization then that creates an aha moment in our life it could be brief but it's an aha moment that yes i am free what am i cribbing about what am i feeling so submerged about i am free krishna has assured me that moment of aha is the illumination the luminescence of sat of satvikta what about rajas we saw that rajas whatever we do rajas with a selfish or desire filled act uh, desire filled heart will have your results which are chalam unstable and uh, changing and adhruvam not long lasting what about tamasik we also saw that anything that is done uh, with a tamasik texture of mind will create a heaviness and a sluggishness which will envelop us envelop and drown us sort of you know why because it's the anxiety worry and grudges envy and a feeling of inadequacy that is going to drag us down pull us down and envelop us into the murky depths and therefore that heaviness that sluggishness of mind uh, that we feel um, that some people feel is a kind of tamasik ta but am i actually uh, bound by satvik and rajasik and tamasik am i really bound that's the question to be asked the question is no i am not bound because the bondage is of my choosing this is the greed that i have for things which stops me which holds me back from being uh, magnanimous or generous so how can i be if i am really free how can i be asim asim means without seema without limits yes you are limitless and i know the scripture say it and krishna is saying it to arjun all the time but how do i feel asim how can i feel asim limitless the only thing to ask oneself is again and again am i this limited body am i this limited mind and intellect on which i have so much damb and darp and arrogance and pride about which is momentary which will be gone in a moment not only the physical body but also my own arrogance will be crushed to pieces by someone else <laughs> so the moment you realize jo ye sab main hu nahi main ye sharir man aur buddhi nahi hu ye nashwar hai so jo main nahi hu wo cheez mujhe kaise bandh sakti hai what i am not how can that hold me it stands to reason it, it it's almost ridiculous ki you know invisible shackles are holding me and i feel this anxiety of the world and i don't feel free to meditate or to have generosity to serve to be selfless and to be to do nishkam karma without kaam desireless action i don't feel free because that generosity uh, is been you know snatched away these are invisible shackles of my own making to jo cheez main nahi hu wo mujhe kaise pakad sakti hai ye mera putra mera putri meri sharir mera और मेरा धन मेरा मान मेरा सम्मान मेरी लोग बढ़ाई करें ये मेरे शैकल्स हैं बट दे आर इनविजिबल एंड दे आर माइंड तो हम कैसे बन सकते हैं असीम लिमिटलेस बाय होल्डिंग ऑन टू सात्विकता सात्विकता ऑफ माय माइंड वो दैवी प्रकृति है थर्टीन चैप्टर कॉल इट दैवी प्रकृति फोर्टीन चैप्टर एंड सेवनटीन चैप्टर कॉल इट सात्विक भाव दैट सात्विक भाव ऑफ राइजिंग अब द the petty desires and the petty self who i call me myself with a certain name now takes us that satvik bhav will take me out of my own bondage that is the whole purpose of having shraddha uh, in in the words of bhagwan and arjun has been listening with such steadfastness that he is truly a deserving uh, candidate for the highest moksha and so are we 
because seventeen uh, chapters is not really easy for people to stick on to right through to the end. And believe me, very few can do it. And Krishna himself has said it uh, in another place that very very few people reach the highest. Very few. So uh, when they announce this big yagya of uh, Upanishads or any of the talks, you know thousands of leaflets go out. Out of which hundred people receive uh, even bother to look at the leaflets. And out of that, uh, 25 turn up. And this is my experience at the ashram. 25 turn up and enroll for it and uh, give their admission fee, etc. And out of that, 10 are listening with rapt attention. Five are actually transforming their lives and trying to make great effort in their actual life to change. And maybe one actually changes. <laughs> that's how it goes and how difficult it is to stick to satvik and to relinquish what is merely of the sansar we will take up 18th chapter the most exciting it also 18th chapter also wraps up many of the concepts uh, right through the gita so it's a kind of uh, revision 18th chapter like a good teacher krishna has done a recap and he has shown a beautiful road map once again but it's a rather big chapter almost more than 70 verses more than 74 and therefore 18th chapter let's gear up for the exciting end next time om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate